Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors. On this episode of Toys Out of the Way, we will be taking a look at all my recent acquisitions over the past few weeks. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, be sure to drop a like down below, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Upcoming videos will feature similar reviews, diorama builds, and more from the vintage collection, so stay tuned. As some of you may know, I've been in the process of moving and changing collection rooms. It's been quite a journey and things are finally settling down and I'm finding time to be able to set up my new collection room. On top of that, I've had numerous pre-orders show up, picked up a few things along the way as well, and needless to say, I have a stack of things that I want to open, take a look at, and discuss further in future videos. Sadly, there are still a few pre-orders that haven't shown up yet and seem to just be delayed here in the States. But for now, I just wanted to show you some of the awesome things that I have been able to pick up. The first thing I wanted to show you was this awesome Droid Factory set that was released recently. These are the Mandalorian droids that are seen in the show. And this is just a really, really cool piece. This is some great world building stuff. I love the Droid Factory Disney editions that we get. These are just some awesome things that you want to add to your displays. And it's a good way to just get four packs out there. I really wish these things could be possibly somehow at retail, but they're exclusive to the Disney parks. So either you have to go there or you have to pay a secondary market price, which this isn't too bad. I, there, I've seen varying scales, but I think I paid about, what, I think 65 bucks for this, which isn't too bad considering it costs $100 just to go to the park and then you have to buy the piece itself. So it wasn't too bad. Um, this droid right here is specifically from the scene when Cobb Vanth is inside the sand crawler and the Jawas are offering him a variety of different things. I really like this droid. This is the main thing that got me excited. I think that coloring on here is fantastic. I love those kind of jade colors. The Republic security droid from the episode when Mando and the crew try to break out uh, the prison mate. And then we have the fairy droid, super, super cool to finally get this guy. He's pretty, you know, necessary if you want to do some of those ending scenes of season one. It'd be nice if we could get his fairy. And then this little guy, I'm not actually sure who that is. And uh, yes, this is one of the droids you see during the Mandalorian season one, who is one of those cargo sled droids. That would be another really cool piece to get, that cargo sled. That would be some great world building stuff. So I was excited to get this and I'm gonna open this up for sure. Moving on, I just wanted to show you some of the wave boxes I got. As you can see over here, I have a Rebel Hoth Trooper. I got a full solid case of eight of those guys cause it's a cool army builder and I had to get some of those for my like Hoth displays. Really awesome, excited to open those. The next box I wanted to talk about was the wave case containing the Mithral, Rebel Hoth Trooper, Bib Fortuna, Bo-Katan, and Quill, who I forgot to put up there. Uh, this is a quill that I found in store before I even got the wave case. I actually found two of these. I opened one up. I don't even know where he is. My room's a mess. He's somewhere. But this is an awesome figure. It is so exciting to finally have quill. It was a long time coming. We absolutely need this guy. He's a fantastic figure, first of all. I will definitely do a review on that wave. But he is so poseable and he comes with some accessories and he just looks really great. Awesome wave. Really, really good wave. I can't say enough about some of the figures in that wave. Oh, and that's another figure. Actually, Lobot. I forgot. I have him somewhere and there's another one in that case. Yeah, the Lobot that is included in that wave is also a fantastic figure. I did not think we would get such a good Lobot. You know, he doesn't do a whole lot in the movie, but I really appreciate when they give us awesome vintage collection stuff that's just high quality, definitive, super articulated figures. Like, that's what I want to see. So moving on, the next thing that we can look at is the droids C-3PO. Absolutely happy to get the droids cards and figures in the line, but this is definitely not my favorite figure of C-3PO. I still think Hasbro has a lot to do to give us a definitive C-3PO. This mold, he's just kind of short. It's odd. I don't need these panels to be taken off. They don't really stick on too well. I haven't even taken them off because I feel like they get worse when you take them off. They just don't stick on too well. He's pretty cool. 
I do like the paint deco on this guy. I think it's kind of fun and simplistic. But yeah, mostly for the card. I did want to get one of each of those releases open just to, I don't know, have them displayed. But yeah, I definitely think we need to move on from this C-3PO. He's not my favorite, but I'm happy to have it. I do want to talk quickly though about Mithral. I only just opened this figure up like a day or two ago. I've been so busy and man, this figure is so cool. The articulation, fantastic. The sculpting is just absolutely beautiful. The likeness, spot on. Really awesome figure. Some people didn't think we would get this random alien figure, but man, so happy to have him. I've picked up a couple extras because he comes with really cool accessories. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do a little review talking more about this figure and some things I'm excited to do with it. Additionally, I just have to talk about this Bo-Katan really quick. Wow. There's nothing else I could say about this figure other than wow. I am such a big fan that Hasbro has updated this um, the ball joint in the legs. It makes it much easier to kind of move around. And this figure is just a joy to pose. And man, yeah, the sculpting just, this is a home run figure. I'm pretty sure this is my current favorite all-time vintage collection figure. Um, we've just wanted this figure for a long time. This character is prominent in so much media and yeah, really excited to have her. Awesome stuff. Moving on, the next thing I was able to pick up were the Mandalorian Maldo Kreese packs. I did happen to order five of these. I wanted to have four open just for the spiders, the accessories, and I was able to actually get one decent one carded. Um, I know Walmart is definitely not the best when it comes to shipping things, but part of me also thinks that these are getting banged up more in the, um, in the warehouse where they're all stored as opposed to when someone actually puts them into the box because the person who put these in a box for me actually did a really nice job of laying them like together and then bubble wrapping everything. It was very nice. And at first I was like, oh wow, I might get quite a few of these nicely carded, but there's definitely some serious dents in some of them. This is the second best one that I got. As you can see, it only has like a tiny dent up here by the peg. Um, but yeah, the others are definitely not as good. And I've opened one already. I definitely plan to open these, but very excited to have this. I like seeing this initiative from Hasbro, giving us some cool accessory packs, little beasts. I absolutely want to see these spiders in a much larger form. That's something Hasbro really should give us. Really cool stuff. And let's quickly take a look at just the Mandalorian himself. I like this little like detail of snow on his boots and stuff. But the biggest improvement are these rocker ankles. I gotta tell you, it is a joy to pose this figure now. The previous one without the rocker ankles was awesome. I love that figure, but this is such a game changer. It is really easy to pose now. Um, also, it's nice to finally get an addition with this upgraded thigh plate. I hope that we see this version of the Mandalorian without snow on him, possibly packed with a dark saber or the spear, maybe a soft goods cape if uh, Hasbro wants to do us that little extra favor. But yeah, this is some really awesome vintage collection stuff right here. Very happy to have these. And some of the last figures that I was able to add to my collection are my Army Builder Packs. Got the Rebel Fleet Trooper Pack and the Stormtrooper Army Builder Pack. I got four of each of these and man, great stuff. This is such a fun, fantastic way to be army building and adding a lot more troops to your collection. I like that Hasbro's taking the initiative to use less plastic in this kind of box. And it's just a nice way to get, you know, multiples out there. It's kind of a pain, honestly, when you have to open a single bubble for like 20 troopers or something like that. So to be able to deliver them in these easy to open boxes with tissue paper is great. I'm going to do separate videos talking more about each one of these and just some ideas that I have moving on and things I would like to see. Now, I was fortunate enough to receive troopers that didn't have terrible quality control issues. I know the Stormtroopers had some really bad issues, and I definitely lucked out with that. Same goes for the Rebel Fleet Trooper. I know people were getting them with like two left arms and crazy stuff like that. 
So I'm happy that I don't have to do any kind of returns. Um, very happy to get the Stormtrooper with the Pauldron. That's something that I've kind of always wanted. Um, I would like them to take the initiative maybe to do different color Pauldrons. I think that would be cool. And yeah, for the Rebel Fleet Troopers, having different face sculpts is such, such a relief. It's very difficult sometimes when you're like, man, my whole collection looks like clones, but they're not clones. <laughs> so very cool stuff. Very happy to have these. Want to see more. Definitely adding a lot of figures to my collection with these Army Builder packs. And on top of it, you can see here that I picked up some more duplicates along the way. I got three more IG-11 units, or actually, yeah, three more IG-11 units, two more Tebos. I picked up another Lando because he was just lonely and hanging out at Target. And I have some ideas for great customs when it comes to that Lando. And another Bo-Katan because I just want to have a lot of those figures. I'm considering making possibly some customs where they're just Night Owl, female Mandalorian figures. So that's something I'm going to figure out. It'd probably be a lot easier to wait for them to do the Costco Reeve figure and then try to customize those with extra pouches and stuff like that. But yeah, excited to have a lot more of these duplicates and do customs and make more scenes. And lastly, we have the Navarro Cantina, which comes with this figure. The Death Trooper on a Mandalorian card back. Pretty cool to have. I would have preferred maybe a brand new figure in there as a client, but usually when it comes to these playsets, Hasbro is set on doing army builders. Which, you know, maybe you're a new collector and you don't have the Death Troopers. This is a great way to finally get one. So, really good card back. Happy to have that. Won't be opening him probably because I have quite a number of them, but we'll see. And here you have the main structure of the cantina itself. I've removed the cardboard because there's no there's no reason to have cardboard Hasbro. Come on. Let's let's get some molded plastic in there. But it's a really good piece to have. I think it's a great building block for making dioramas. Definitely I'm going to do some upgrades to this and make a video showing you how you can upgrade yours. So stay tuned for that. I think it's a great addition to the vintage collection. There's some things that I think they could have done differently, but I will point those out in the upcoming video. Here's some scenes I've set up recently with this new addition to the vintage collection. I think the Navarro Cantina is a wonderful release, and if you use your imagination, there are a variety of different scenes that you can set up, not just based in the Mandalorian. The accessories are fantastic, and I think the set is a great start for anybody who wants to start world building. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at all these awesome vintage collection releases. What's your favorite figure that you've recently acquired? Is there a pre-order you're still waiting on? Let me know in the comments down below, I'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel, it really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and I'll see you on the next video.